It's a beautiful Wednesday morning here in Lagos and it's Boxing Day. So officially, you get to open all of the gifts you got yesterday. In case you haven't gotten any, don't worry. Uh, the gift master come in and you too can give a gift. It's never too late to give and share in such a season that we're in. Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to this morning. I am Nifemi Oguntoye and I'm standing in for your regular host on the show, Yuri Folari. Now, we are counting down to the 2019 general election and today we're turning our attention to to the role women have been playing in politics and of course what they will do yet again come next year. In the 19 years of Nigeria's democracy, they say no woman has been, you know, elected as president, vice president, or even an elected governor. But don't forget that in 2006, a woman by the name Dame Ngozi Etieba was the governor of a number of state, even though she was governor for only three months. That was from November 2006 to February 2007. But she's been considered to be the very first female governor in Nigeria's history. Of course, the only as at now. Recall that she became governor when the previous governor, uh, Peter Obi, was impeached by the House of the State Legislature for alleged gross misconduct and then transferred power back to Obi three months later after Obi got an appeal judgment uh, nullifying that impeachment process. However, in elective positions since 1999, a fact sheet by the Center for Democracy and Development shows that women haven't gotten, haven't even reached 10 percent representation at all. So out of 109 Senate seats in 1999, there were just three women. In 2003, there were four. The highest number was recorded in 2007, where there were nine women at the National Assembly. But in 2011 and 2015, there were just seven of them. Now, um, the fear now is the number might just reduce given the fallout of the just concluded primary election. Of course, the number of aspirants were huge, but many of them got etched out. And I'm joined by one of them in the studio this morning. She's a woman and environmental activist, and of course, a two time commissioner in Edo State, first commissioner of arts, culture, and tourism, and later commissioner of women affairs. Uh, and then Elizabeth Jemitola. Good morning and thanks for coming. Good morning. Me. Compliments of the season Wonderful to you. Wonderful for me. Thank you. All right, so let's begin. Yeah. The same women are yet to occupy up to 15% of elective position in a country where the voting population of both men and women are almost equal. Now, there are some who consider that to be quite unfortunate. But my first question to you is, why vote women since we are all equal? That's what we're made to believe. So what's the essence? Whether a man or woman wins an election, what, what, what really is the benefit of having a woman in mm -hmm. office? Well, women tend to be more passionate about their work and um, they tend to be more dispassionate about irregularities in um, governance. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's, it's good to vote women. I mean, countries that have voted women have been some of the greatest countries mm. um, in the world today uh, with Argentina, uh, um, Switzerland. England, mm. Switzerland, Lithuania, Belarus, even African uh, countries, quite even a African countries yes, with Malawi, with Lab, um, Liberia, Liberia, Ethiopia recently, you know, Ethiopia recently yes, <laughs> for the Prime Minister, you know. So um, you can see, and also if we come to Nigeria, I mean, a woman uh, was in charge of our finance ministry. Uh, we had also um, you think she did fantastically well? Yes, I think she did. Um, she did great. You didn't mention she the former Minister of Petrol, of Petroleum. <laughs> now, that, that is sexist, you know. Um, when people throw jabs like that... Uh, no, we uh, will mention those who have done well. I also, also uh, just mentioned another name. Yes, uh, but why that, would you that is just accuse me of being sexist? That's just one mm. name in... Uh, thousands of names, I mean, I can mention... And she's even still innocent until proven otherwise. Voila, thank you so much, I mean, for, for saying that. that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But then there are some who would yeah. say that um, gender parity, mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, might um, sacrifice competence. They just um, uh, uh, conducted vice presidential uh, uh, debate. If you check the social media, mm. quite a number of people weren't quite excited about the performance of the female representation at that level. So the fallout is, if we want more women, mm. are we sure that we're going to get competent people? We do have um, competent people. It's not a question to be asked at this point. Mm. It's a definitive um, evenement. 
um, something that we know is sure. I mean, you have a beer question. Uh -huh. And I do hope that um, when they do the presidential debate, they'll put out, um because if they don't, that will be injustice to women. Um, at least for the gender factor, we want to see. I think she made the list of five. Oh, know, she did. Oh, okay. I'm happy to hear that. Um, then the women that were in the presidential, um, vice presidential debate, they did quite well. These are women who are new in politics. You know, they don't have the experience that the men have. I mean, the men start. But well, they're um, supposed to be passionate, according to you. Yes, they they were passionate. You could see the passion in them, and you could see that if given a chance, they would do um, remarkably well. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave that to, you know, the viewer to decide whether indeed they did very well. But according to the economic uh, community of West African states, Nigeria is the country with the lowest number of women representation in the national parliament, as well as the sub-regional parliament. So yes. in all of the bicameral uh, national parliament, there are only 30 women, seven senators, 23 members of the House of Reps. I've heard you say there are 15, so I'm confused really about that. They are right 15, now. not but 23. Then in 2007... Yes you contested for the House of Reps mm -hmm. in a Kukwedo federal constituency, mm -hmm. and you think you won that election. What exactly happened? I do not think I won. I, I did win. Even the courts said so. I mean, if you remember, if I, mean, I think you were in Edo State at, at that time. Um, it was uh, the PDP, the AC, and the ANPP, and I represented the ANPP, and we won the elections, but... Uh, was characterized by, of course, um, vote rigging and um, vote writing, <laughs> let's call it that. Uh, we managed to get the ballot papers. I mean, they made the error of allowing the ballot papers to go to the INEC office. And um, INEC was sympathetic with us. Uh, so they gave us the ballot papers. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to divorce how we got it, but you know, in the morning, um, we arrived at the courts with the ballot papers. I mean, it shocked my um, opponents at that time. And they did the counting, and I won remarkably well. So the court annulled that particular Yes, they did. What happened and thereafter? Appeal came, mm -hmm. and the usual manipulations. I mean, the opponent the won the appeal. Yes, one day. Oh, you have a very good memory. Yeah, let, 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 let. thank you. I'm trying to ask you as many questions <laughs> yeah. as I can with a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, you, do, do you think your loss had anything to do with the agenda? Well, yes, I do think so, yeah, yeah, um, to a great extent. Uh, you think that if you were a man, yeah. that election wouldn't have been manipulated? No, if the elections, they were not able to manipulate it in spite of my gender, you know. I mean, the people of Akukwedo decided they wanted me and they stood by me across all the parties, including How the How did PDP. you achieve that? You just got back from France at that particular time. So yes, you were relatively new, even to the people. Yeah, I had a history at home. Okay. I used to visit home. I wasn't brought up at home. Even my parents were not brought up at home, even though they're both from um, my village, also so. But we were always home as children. I see. You know, and yeah. even when I grew up as an adult, I took my friends home. Friends from abroad, friends from Nigeria, because I was crazy about my place. And I must say, where I come from is probably the most beautiful place in Nigeria today. Mm. You know, people should go and explore Akukweda and also. I understand the So I had a history at home, mm. and they wanted somebody they could trust, somebody who truly loved them. And then they called me. You know, so um, I had the chiefs calling me and um, the student bodies calling me, you know, and th that's how I came. So when I came, there was no need to even do any big campaigns. Let's mm -hmm. fast forward now to 2019. There's been the accusation that women were not given, you know, a fair playing field in the just concluded pa party primaries. There were a huge number of female aspirants. But as we speak right now, I'm not sure of the figure, but maybe maybe about 50 women contesting mm -hmm. in the 2019 general election. According to OBA Zekwesili, despite the record-breaking number of female aspirants ahead of the 2019 elections, mm -hmm. the majority of them were sidelined during the primaries. You also attempted to uh, contest in mm -hmm. earlier in the month, I think um, yes. two months ago. What was yeah. your experience like? Uh, um, this was really horrible. We were not just sidelined, we were harassed. You know, um, we were 
I would not say manipulated out of a system. I would just say there was an obvious plan and uh, to make sure that women don't get in. I, I'll explain. I, I know the reason why, because at least I was in governance for eight years. And um, I was the only woman who served um, with um, Adam Zoshomale, the current chairman of the APC. the APC, who started with him and ended with him. By the time the tenure ended in 2016, um, we were just two women, and the second woman came during the second term. And, you know, she didn't start with us on the first tenure. Mm. So you can see the lot of women, just two women um, out of, um, I think we were 22 commissioners or 24, I don't remember ex the exact figure. Now look at that. Now you have the same person at the helm of affairs as chairman of a party. And then when, when I came into government, I asked to be taken to the Ministry of Arts and Culture because that's what I know and I didn't want to know anything new. But you had the ministries that they called the Juicy Ministries. Um, yeah, the Juicy Ministries and of course, once it's a Juicy Ministry, it has to be a man. So what is the conclusion? We have a culture of money men and muscle men in politics today. But let, me, let, me, let, me, let me quickly take you back to your party, mm. Prabri. I understand that the major parties, mm. uh, to an extent, tried for women. One of them, uh, to some extent, gave discount to nomination forms. The other party even gave it free. I'm sure you got your nomination form at a discounted price. Yes, at 50%, and I paid two million. 1,950,000, that's um, approximately 2 million. And what is this idea that women cannot compete because of the, you know, financial expectation? One of the richest women in Africa is in Nigeria. Uh, don't you think it's a myth that um, women cannot really compete because they are not as wealthy as men? Yes, that's where I was going when I was um, talking about the money men and the mus muscle men. Mm. Now, there's this general fascination with muscle men and money men in politics. Uh, I call them the M&Ms. I came up with um, the, this. Um, uh, yes. Now, M&Ms are generally and most likely men. Yeah. Muscle, what do you mean by muscle? <laughs> they have the thugs, they have uh, people who, when the elections are not going their way, they can scatter things and, you know, mm. and then money, of course, we know that the economy is in the hands of men. Now, this um, richest woman in Africa you talked about is one woman out of so many, so many. And we know that generally women are very, very poor in Africa, mm. uh, particularly in Nigeria, you know, and then we need to talk about support. The rich women in Nigeria need to get together and support other women. It doesn't happen here. You rarely see women contributing you know, to other women in politics. There are many instances where I have an auntie who is very generous, you know, really, really generous you know, to us. You know. But when I called her and said, oh, uh, auntie, I took the nomination form and I would like your support, she said, please, anything else but politics. Mm. I would not put a penny of mine in politics because Nigerian politics is too dirty and I don't want to encourage anyone. And we left it at that. She didn't send me a couple, but she's a very generous person, you know. So that's the problem we're having. You can't reach the women who are wealthy to support other women because they believe that most likely the woman is not going to make it. Mm. They would rather support a man mm. who would serve their business interests better and, you know, who they know that their money will be worthwhile with. We have to stop that. So know. when you had that interest, mm. uh, you you were faced with an incumbent speaker of the House of Assembly as well as an incumbent member of the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you feel that you, it was a fair chance, that you had a fair chance of winning in the first place? Well, I knew that I could win uh, because um, the people of Akokoedo, you know, it's still passionate about wanting a woman. Mm. We have an incumbent um, House of Reps representatives um, member who has not really done anything at home and who was asking for a third chance, a third tenure to be able to do something. Mm. I mean, when you're telling the people that, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to do anything because, 
uh, I'm not a ranking member. But by the time I get a third tenure, I would be a ranking member. In fact, I'm going to be the, the pr um, president of the House of Reps, you know. The speaker. Uh, the speaker, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg, I beg your pardon, um, you know. So, and then you come up with this great idea, which is a great idea. Oh, I'm going to bring a school of mining, you know, to Akokwaido. Mm. You see, these are the tricks that men play. Let me hold you mm. for a minute. Yeah. On a lighter note, they say if a politician fails, then mm. if a child fails in school, yes. you ask such a child to repeat. I <laughs> beg your pardon. Let's take this call Some from children. Dokumu. Yakub is calling us from Dokumu. Good morning, Dak Yakub. Hello, good morning. Yeah, morning. Please go ahead with your conversation. Uh, good morning to your guest. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the truth must be saying here. Uh, woman involved in politics, I think uh, in the long run, we will find out that as time goes on, we we'll never see a woman won an election in a period state out of assembly, including national assembly. You know why? Why? Because until there is a law put in place, that will make it mandatory for political parties to make sure that satisfies the sense of evaluation given to women. Because failure to do so, yeah. literally, women do, do not have capacity. I, I'm not saying terms of intellectual, they are very, very intelligent yeah. women. But in terms of a dirty game, they cannot, they cannot play. Mm -hmm. Until they make sure that there is a law put in place that will make it mandatory. If you don't give 35 percent mm -hmm. in your political party, I make sure you never accept you. If you have been that or not done, if they forget it, nothing will happen. They cannot get anywhere. But who are, who are those people that are going to make the law? They are men. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution, Yakub. Perhaps the men have not been well convinced by the women. But he talked about the 35% affirmation yes. action bill. Yeah. Uh, we saw it at the floor of the mm. National Assembly last year, mm. and the bill was seeking to, to an extent, uh, give 35% seats in government to women, 20% yeah. at the state level. Uh, that bill did not pass through. Uh, it didn't get enough votes from the Senate. I'm not sure if I have the figure here, but only 49 senators uh, voted for it. Uh, do, you, do you think that that is all that is required? Or, for instance, um, do you see that bill uh, gaining some voice again at the floor of the National Assembly? Um, well, yes, this time. I'll tell you why. Um, but first and foremost, I want to thank the person who just called. He's so well informed. Mm. Uh, I think it will be good to have his number so that we, the group I belong to can interact with um, very serious and very learned people like, like him. You know, he's, he's really well informed and I'm so impressed. Now, um, talking about the 35% affirmative action bill, it is very correct. Without legislation, we won't be able to get anywhere because like I said, the M&Ms, mm. that factor is really, really important and it plays a great deal. Yeah, the, the economy is controlled by men. The legislation, they're all, uh, legislature, I beg your pardon, they're all mostly men. Mm -hmm. um, now, what we have done is to come together, the uh, female legislators and politicians, and work together. We triggered a bill which is already um, in the um, Senate and the House of Reps. You know? with international bodies, because we knew that if we continue to fight the political parties, we would never get anywhere. You know, like for instance, Edo State did not select, I will call it select, because what was done in Edo State was selection. I mean, you know that. According to you, I don't know that. Okay, you don't know that as a journalist, but um, as, an ordinary person on the streets. I'm sure you know that. And it's only your word against <laughs> many others. Let's take this call from Abia yeah. State. Mazi Okorofo, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Anifemi. Good morning, Madam Jimitola. Good morning, sir. Compliments of the season. Good and morning. same to you, sir. Season, yeah, same to you, sir. Uh, Madam, I want to find out from you as a, poli as a politician. Mm. What does it take Nigerian women mm. presently or in future for a woman to be a president and she has a vice as a woman. I'm asking this question because if you look at the population of women in this country, mm -hmm. they are higher than the men. But a situation whereby the women see them, we are moving, we are moving, we are moving. During the time you see them collecting uh, these five, five, nine, 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 nine,
Thank you very much. Our compliments for this event. Thank you very much for your Thank contribution. You so much, sir. Why do why don't <laughs> women support women? You know, um, I I gave you an example earlier on. You know uh, about women are just weary and they they're actually scared. There's also that fear of men. You know, the fear of men is there, and uh, the intimidation is always there, even at the grassroots, like you said. You know. Um, but yes, it is possible to have a female president, you know, or vice president. But what would you do, for instance, there are about five mm. female presidential candidates yes. in the 2019 general elections, perhaps the highest number we've had since 1999. Mm -hmm. Would you rather support a female president? Your party is not feeding a female president. Would you, would you support a female president? My party is At hardly... the expense of your own party's uh, presidential mm. candidate. My party is hardly fielding female anything. You know, so don't even talk about president when even in the House of Assembly it's difficult for my party to field a member. Like I said in um, our state, mm. you know, they didn't even select a f one female for any of the houses, the lower house or the upper house, you know, so um, my party has failed us. You're shying away from my question. Would you vote for an OB as a Quisley, for instance, and yet um, be a part of another party? I love Obie Zekwesele, you know, um, and all the females that I have seen. I always make it a point to watch them when I hear that a female is coming on, you know. Um, I would love to support any of the women, you know, but to support them, they have to be able to get to the <coughs> point where they get the women together. The mindset of women now is economy where is the money show us the money i mean women will come out openly and tell you show us the money uh, sometimes some women have told me that they're having a rally they're talking about serious issues with women that could improve their lives um, like loans female loans and blah 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 and blah you know and some man comes up and they hear he's sharing rappers hmm. and gillies somewhere hmm. and they abandon this all important you know discussion hmm you know, that would impact on their future and run to collect. Perhaps it's a reflection of the economic status and all of that. Let's take this mm. discussion to Niger State. Ibrahim is calling us now. Good morning, Ibrahim. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Compliment of the season. Wish you the same. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, sir. Uh, I just want to make a short contribution. Mm -hmm. I see the problem of this country mm -hmm. as far as women as an is concerned is the women themselves. How do I say this? In, I think something around that 2011, there was a time a woman was contesting an election. At the primary, primary mm. level, this primary that they normally do, yes. you can't believe that that woman got only one foot. <laughs> and when, that, when, that, when the result was announced, I look at the four. I could see more than 2,000 women there. So there, I now agree that the problem of this country, uh, of the women in this country, are the women. Well, she's, uh, <sighs> thank you very much for your country. As you go in this country, I don't see any woman. I, I think you made your if point you very clearly. If women in this country mm. can start this coordination by talking to the women, what other women are doing in other part of the world, mm. can we be their limit? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for your contribution. Uh, he's making reference to Sarah Jibril. Yes, you recall yes. that four years before that time, uh, she contested in presidential election and she had over 100,000 votes, the highest number of votes any woman has had in mm -hmm. election. But then at the party primary, she was only able to secure one. Now let's look at the chances of a woman becoming Nigeria's president. You made mention earlier about mm. you know female leaders across the world. Interestingly, in Africa, there are quite a number of them. Mm. There is Johnson, uh, uh, Ellen Sirleaf in Liberia. We talked mm. about the Ethiopian Prime Minister in Namibia, Central African Republic, Senegal. Mm. E even in South Africa, mm. you'll be amazed that there was a female president of course, in acting capacity in 2008, mm. but she mm. was there for only 14 mm. hours. Yeah. How soon do you see a female president emerging in Nigeria? Um, first, let me go back to the Sarah Jibril uh, phenomena. That's right. I mean, that was traumatizing for women, and I think it still haunts us, you know, and 
it's, it's actually, people may not know this, it's, but it's gone a long way to set us back several years. But you weren't expecting her to win. She was contesting no, against we, the incumbent president. We were not expecting her to win, but we certainly were not expecting her to get one vote. I mean, that is a one that traumatizes me up till today. And because I ask myself, where was her PA? I mean, was it not a delegate, you know? Where did, she must have had a, some kind of staff mm. that were delegates. So what happened? Where was the woman leader? Mm. What happened, you know? I can boldly say that um, when we had our elections, the primary elections um, in Edo State, That's right. and there was a woman who w needed our votes, I did tell women to please, at our meeting, you know, engage her yeah. and let's find out if she has the kind of content we need to lead us and if she does have that kind of content we should be bold enough to dump the men and go with her i mean that i made that a public statement at the meeting we had now what are the chances for women like i said the sarah jubel phenomena set us back several years yeah. you know we're made fun by men you know all the time on this uh, matter. Mm. So what to do now? What to do now? We really need a kind of radical movement, a kind of mass mobilization, you know, that would change the mindset of women and shift it from the always running after, oh, Empowering my children them need, to yes, for money sex. for today, I need to pay school fees, I need, you know, to actually telling them that, look, if you can just bear things for one year, just one year, you know, we can turn things around, and Sorry. if the power is in our hands, mm -hmm. our lives have changed. Let me take this good. call very quickly from Makadi. Good morning, Garfa. Good morning. Compliment of the season. Uh, wish you the yes, same. Madam. You see, Madam. Yes, sir. Compliment of the season. Yes, very same to you, sir. So what I'm seeing is that let me make my submission as well. You yes, see, sir. the society and the system are not encouraging you now. That doesn't pass. If the system is encouraging them, sometimes, before primary election, you look at the exorbitant money that they are putting for the nation. Mm -hmm. Some women don't have that money to mobilize. Mm -hmm. I believe that the system can do a way that will encourage the women by reducing the money to cost of buying the home, the cost of contesting generally. And aside from that, the society, let's look at the northern part of the country. Mm. That's so certainly that they deprive women to reach. That's a scenario that happened in Karaba, for Mama Karaba. She tried to reach me excellently well. Yeah. But because of the system mm. and the society, I can tell her, you know that, that she should break the gym. It's all right, Gaffer. I'm afraid that's how much time can permit us to take oh. from uh, that side. Mm. Thank you very much for calling in. We have to wrap this up. He made mention of Mama Taraba, who almost became mm -hmm. the first um, yeah. elected female governor. So your group, the Women Legislators and Politicians mm. Pressure Group, how close are you to achieving your dreams of um, getting this 35% affirmative action? Oh, very close. The European Union is involved and several international bodies. The Human Rights Commission is involved. We made presentations and we had um, serious consultations with all these bodies before we came up with the bill that we have presented. Um, we all triggered it, um, the, the body. And, um, the bill is with the National Assembly? Yes, it is. Uh, the it moment. failed the other time. So how sure are you that it's going to pass this Well, time? I dare them to make it fail this time. And Sorry. the God we serve, which is the God of women also, will <laughs> visit them <laughs> with his... <laughs> Interestingly, we don't know whether God is a man or a woman. What do you think? Well, God is a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and then Elizabeth Jemitala, woman and environmental activist, two-time commissioner in Industry. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, for me. Wonderful to see you again. Glad to have you come. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break now, but we'll return. We'll continue our conversation ahead of the 2019 general election. But this time... It will be with the man.
We're counting down to the 2019 general election and preparation, no doubt, is in top gear. Parties are getting set. Now, the question is whether the electorate is also getting set to choose right this time around. But I'm joined by an international lawyer and a politician, Femi Aino, who is plying his own political trade <laughs> in Ogun State. Good morning and thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. It's Compliments nice of the season yes, to, you. to you. Thank you. So earlier we were talking about women in politics. Do yes. you also feel that um, we need more women? Uh, Would Nigeria be better? if we have more women leaders? Yes, I do agree. And I think it's better we have some sort of affirmative action. But if you listen to Yakubu, we have an issue, whether we can get the necessary legislative framework mm. for this to work is right. something which I have an issue with because you have a male dominated parliament and this is a, patri is a patriarchal society which is dominated by men. So it's very difficult. And the women too, if they want to be at the top echelons of the political arena, what they will need to do, they need to come together as one. But even if, we cannot get that legislative framework. It is very vital and important for each political party in Nigeria to have some form of affirmative action or policy right. that will show that, look, once we get to power, look, take for instance the ADC. They said, look, 30% position will be for women. At least that is a step in the right direction. And if that's not going to happen, each political party must try as much as possible to have some sort of affirmative policy whereby, because the constitution even forbid you from discriminating against women. Right. And in a representative democracy, you want women, you want transgender people, you want men, and then the idea will vitalize because there are some issues which are peculiar to women, which men cannot address. But having said that, I'm not saying we want to have a rancorous parliament where women are bickering or not. We need people who knows what it takes That's and who right. can debate the issue. So let's go to Ogun State, where, which happens to be your constituency. Yes. I stand to be corrected, but the last time Ogun had a female representative perhaps was in the 6th uh, National Assembly when we had the Yabo Obasanjo and all of that. Yes. Uh, you contested at the primary election uh, order the APC uh, and you wanted to become senator in Ogun West? No, 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 no. I think you are missing the point. Okay. I didn't even, uh, I'm, I'm in the ADC, not, a, not no, APC. I said ADC. ADC, yes. okay, I my apologies, ADC, yeah. my apologies. How did that and, play out for you? Well, it played out well, but I didn't go for the primary because I didn't obtain the nomination form. Why? Because at a point, I just, you see, the politics we play, we don't play, Nigeria don't play true democracy. It is an astonishing form of politics that we play, where people are trying to see what they can get, either as an individual or as a group. And what you discover is that as time goes by, it is it's not about personality. It is not about the political party. It is about individual interest. And if care is not taken, you realize that everybody just wants to take a little bit of you. But well, you didn't uh, get the nomination form. How come, how come you are coming to this conclusion of you know, the process being extortionate? No, because I was on defeat, even though despite. At the last minute, I decided I'm not going to obtain the because form. Because you think the process wasn't going to be It fair. was a skewed process. Mm -hmm. But that notwithstanding, even though I didn't obtain the nomination form as we speak, People still call me senator, they call me honorable. Why walk into your studio? One of your security guards just say, ah, honorable. But that's fine. I don't know what that means. Honorable that did they obtain the nomination form. But that's Nigerian politics. Okay. And I'm going to challenge you. You go outside your gate there and just announce to the world that, oh, you want I want to, to be a senator. Before you walk to the library, you will see the number of people <laughs> calling you honorable. Because uh, they just want to get a bit of you. And they might not vote for you, but they just want your money and all of that. <laughs> yes. but, but they say Ogun State is opening up. There's the SDP, there's the ADC, the PDP, and the APC. Yes. Do you think that 2019 general election is really uh, uh, going to be a very keenly contested election in that part of the country? Well, I don't think so. I think it's going to be the dirtiest election in that state How do so you far. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because money is going to, you know, there are a lot of money back in this election. Look, you have the Abiodun of the APC. is wealthy. You have Ladi, 
Ade Butu, whose father is uh, Shifade Kessington, uh, the Baba Jebu man. Then, so that is there. And at the same time, you have an incumbent governor who is sponsoring a candidate of another political party. So what is going to play out in the long run is that, look, money, people are going to throw money into this election. But come watch me. I can tell you, and I'm telling you this authoritatively, that the next governor of Ogun State is coming from Ogun West. And it's not going to be any of these political gladiators. And if you want me to mention him... No, I, 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 I wouldn't want you to mention that oh, so yes, that you don't okay. put me in trouble. All right, but, I take what I'm really concerned about is the fact that there's a lot happening in Ogun, in Ogun which That's many people cons uh, consider to be a watershed in our political history. For the first time, the incumbent governor mm -hmm. is not supporting his own party's gubernatorial candidate. candidate and yes. that's very interesting. So I'm thinking, for instance, what happens when the president comes for a campaign and he wants to give the, you know, the, they give them flags yes. and then he's also running as a senator on yes. the same party. Um, but there are some who are saying this is opening the political space. No, How do you see it? No, I didn't see it that way. I think it's just creating confusion, left, right and centre. You work here. Is it possible for you if I come here with a 10 million advert for your organization, you will say because you are not happy with the management, I should take it somewhere else. That means you are working against the interests of the organization where you work. And that's not going to happen. And what is happening in this state is that, look, you have a governor. You want the next governor of that state to come from a good ways. If it is true, you have a genuine intention. Now, you have a preferred candidate, and your party said one way or the other after the primary that this person, we don't want this person, this person will be the governorship candidate for that election. Mm. That's fine. You see, in politics, there is something they call the principle of collective responsibility. What that means is that you may not even like your party manifesto, you may not even like their policy, but you need to toe the party line, because that is why you are a member. You, will, you cannot stay within the party and be sponsoring another candidate for a political party. You cannot stay within the party and then you are campaigning for another candidate. You see, it shows you are not a true Democrat in well, the What's the implication it? here for the concerned party? Because we're talking about the incumbent governor, mm -hmm. and we've seen the role, the big role they always play no, no, in no. elections. Sorry, don't be carried away and don't get, please, don't get starstruck. The era of an incumbent governor producing a successor is over in Ogu State. And I'll tell you why. Governor Benga Daniel tried that during the last election to have Goyega Isiaka as a, as a successor. It didn't work out. And this uh, governor, Amosu, is trying the same thing. And what is going to happen in the long run, I can tell you, it's not going to happen. That is as simple as that. If he really wants someone from Ogu West to be the next governor of the state. There is a candidate from Ogu West in another political party without crisis in the name of Boyega Isiaka of ADC. But and that is the way to go. Are you concerned but about the fact that there's also trouble in the other big party? The PDP, as we speak now, yes, has its candidates, um, you know, Buruji Kashamu won in court, they're back in court. The national uh, uh, headquarters of the party seem to have a different candidate in mind. Yes. Uh, don't you think that, um, uh, uh, as it is now, it's a very confusing state? In yeah, that that's country. what I'm saying, that they are creating confusion here and there. And I also think that it also makes it, you know, more or less like an open space. It's such a situation where any candidate could just win. Well, uh, not any candidate. It's the underdog. You see, by the time these two elephants are fighting all over the place, what is going to happen is that you have the underdog, you will be ripping from that crisis. And if care is not taking, what is going on? The PDP, they are mentioned on necessary crisis in the state. Ladi Adebutu wants to be governor. Senator Kashamu wants to be the governor. Then during their flag of campaign, the Southway, mm -hmm. the, uh, the flag was handed to uh, Ladi Adebutu, but INEC has uh, Senator Kashamu as the governorship candidate in the state. Oh, Whether Ladi Adebutu is going to contest election with the party flag, let's wait and see. So it, with that crisis ongoing, and you should give yourself the benefit of hindsight. This is what happened in Nodo State mm. when Mimiko was in power. And at the end of the day, the PDP lost out. Mm. And the way things are going, that's what is going to happen in Nodo State. But by and large, the point is this.
the next governor, and I'm repeating, is coming from Ogo West, but it's not going to be any of these gladiators you are talking about. For the incumbent governor, there are some who would say, uh, one way or the other, he's gotten some form of endorsement from Mr. President. Recently, he took um, the APM uh, um, uh, uh, party chairman to the president, yes. and the president was to saying, well, a letter. anyone who, any party, uh, willing to support me, is welcomed. Yes, there's nothing wrong if you want to have such an open door policy. You don't think that body language is such that, oh, I, I have endorsed no, no. the arrangement. Please, the don't be carried away with the body language because that's subject to different interpretations. Right. You know, the president is the president of Nigeria. He has an open door policy. If you want to come and support me, come and there's nothing wrong with that. But the issue is this. The onus is on APC to take a decision about guide Governor Amosu and Governor Okorosha of Imo State, because I listened to your interview with him the other day. You see, you are in that party. You are carrying the flag of the party in order to get to the Senate. And now you are saying, look, if my party brings this person forward, we are not going to. No, you can't do that. Already the window of substitution is closed. So what no, do you expect no, the no, no, to do? Right? What they will do is this. Let me tell you. Mm. And that's what is going to happen in the long run. You work here. You can't run your business against that of your employer. It's either you are here or you go somewhere. There is no opportunity for what you call consequence. Let me tell you this. What the APC should do now, as things stand, is to expel these individuals. Can any party no, because, afford no. to expel an incumbent governor? Let me, let me, why? Mm. Why? why? Okay. Do they have immunity against expulsion? Let me, let, let, let me just tell you. But they're you relevant this. in an election. No, no, no. You, are, you see, they are relevant in an election. I take your point. But do take my point. If you become a disruptive influence, you have to go. And that is what they are doing. It's not forget anti-party because they haven't come out openly to campaign. Well, you for know, there are some who would say that they haven't done anything quite differently from what other governors have done in other states. So why is the party, the national headquarters of the party, uh, are concerned about, this is not the first time an incumbent governor would, would, would want to offer or produce its own successor. Yes, we have also seen it in other states, no, no, even no, in this are, election. I'm not, we're not saying something is wrong with that. But so what is different with Omo and Imo? And I'll tell you, if mm. your party turn around and say, look, this is our decision. Mm. We are not taking your preferred candidate. And if you are a genuine party member who has the interest of that political party at heart, then you told your party line. And what is going to happen is this. Once they expel you, because once you are expelled, you are once in a school. Once you are expelled from that school, you don't enjoy the rights and privileges of being a student because you can't come to the library. So you're saying that, that an expulsion at this time yes. will truncate uh, the candidacy, to be, uh, the yes. senatorial candidacy with the APC? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Because once you expel them, you write a letter to INEC and say, look, these people, we have expelled them from our party because they are becoming a disruptive influence. But you, you, you are not a member of the APC, so I you are not... ADC, yes. You have an ADC, so yes. you are not likely going to know what the APC intends to do with no, this. No, no, no. But, uh, but uh, you, you see, mm. that, uh, that's where you are getting it wrong. There are certain things you can surmise. Oh, right. You understand Because me? you're so, an international yes. lawyer. <laughs> no, no, no. It goes beyond that. <laughs> Let's Thank take you. a break and we'll be back with this interesting uh, conversation. We'll be back after now. Stay with us. Glad to have you join us again. Now, the phone lines are officially open and you can be a part of the show. We're talking about 2019 general election, Ogun State in focus. Interestingly, the two big parties there seem to have troubles with their gubernatorial candidate. And I'm joined with, um, well, he used to be an ADC senatorial aspirant in Ogun West, international lawyer and politician, Femi Aino. Thank you for staying in the course on Thank the you. program. Thank so there are many who would say that uh, what we're experiencing right now, the confusion, the political confusion in Ogun State, mm -hmm. is a fallout of corruption in the internal uh, party structure. For instance, the primary election that just took place. What mm -hmm. do you say? How far really are we as a nation to get it right with our internal politics? I, I, I think uh, there's something wrong with the way we play politics in Nigeria. Even these primaries, you know, and I agree, we can't isolate 
what is going on. Let me just hold you for a minute to take this caller from Maguro. Maguro is in Ogun State. Good morning, Lawrence. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Terrific. I greet your, your, your guest. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my contribution to this issue of Ogun State politics is that we are not paying attention to certain things. We are not passing the message to those people who will determine mm. who is going to be the governor in Ogun State, the masses. And when you look historically, the people of Ogun State, they don't always vote. And that is why the sitting governor wants to take the advantages. If the, if the people of Ogun State fought overwhelmingly, they will decide who will govern them. The governors should not behave like a god or not. Democracy is about people. And people should choose who they want to lead them. That is my own. Me, in, in my own area, it took me one year to change my voting card from Ujudu to Maburu. Yeah. I pay all the price. But unless it's coming now, I will determine who I will fight for. And the journalist, the moderator, should not play the usher. We should, we should do the politics. Politics is about number. Leave our most alone. It's he can, right. he can yeah. sponsor any candidate, but we, the people, we, we decide who is going to be the governor for Muntay. That is my contribution. It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution. Glad to have you. Uh, on the show. Uh, I'm wondering what you meant by leave the governor alone. Uh, no, on the can't. news recently, the APM uh, uh, led 60 political parties to adopt Akinlade. It's news. It's also relevant what is happening because they say structures, numbers, mm -hmm. you know, win election. Yeah, uh, don't you think that the governor, the incumbent governor, seems to yeah, have so all, I, all of that right now? Yes. And I how agree. relevant is it in the I election? I agree, agree with you, but you have to be very careful. Mm. The numbers is neither here nor there because how many of them even have PVC mm. in the same... Uh, how many of them have PVC? So that's another thing. And also, don't forget... There is a power game going on in Ogo State now, whereby, you know, if you listen to the governor some few weeks back, he said, we are going to show them who owns the soil. Mm. And that is, that's power. And let me tell you, it's not impossible when there's going to be a flag off of a campaign of one political party for people to be hired, buses to be branded just for the day in order to show people that, yes, you have crowd. That can influence some people mm -hmm. and they can support you. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean when it comes to an election, some of these people will go out and vote. Some will even show nonchalant attitude that, look, what are, I did this last time, what did I gain? So you need to create a margin for that. But the point is this. In Ogun State, he said that uh, Ogun people don't come out of uh, politics is about people. We agree. The right of the people to choose who wants to lead them. It is not about the right of one individual to tell them that this is uh, my the candidate and that is the way he's supposed to go. Ogun after Lagos, you know, presumably should have some of the most enlightened electorate. Yes. Uh, how informed would you say they are? as regards the importance of the forthcoming election. Yes, people are well informed. And then during the election, come March 2019, they are going to show that mm -hmm. because they are going to use their PVC right. to vote for a candidate of their choice. Mm -hmm. And they are not going to use the, their PVC to vote for a particular candidate because that candidate is being sponsored by one particular individual. Let they me take this call have... very quickly from Lecky. Good morning, Otuma. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Uh, how are you? Terrific. Please go ahead yeah, with your contribution. To, I, I want to make my conclusion to the program going on. All right, go ahead, please. Uh, the problem of Ogu State, I think I don't know how they look at it, but I know Amosu is, is flying the wrong kind. <coughs> and at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think the party has any other choice than to get him expelled from the party. Thank you. Amosu has played the role that would make him to be expelled completely at the end of the day. Even if he's not expelled, if, if eventually he even won the Senate seat, I don't see how Musu can survive it. Because all this time he's playing, the, this era of uh, godfatherism, I don't think it will work for him. In my own candid opinion, Bogo State loves himself, and I know that by the grace of God, the way the thing is going, even though I'm not from Bogo State, uh, I know the next governor of Bogo State is Akwadeodu. Nobody can stop that. <laughs> That's all right. And most of will lose that completely in this case. 
Thank you very much, yeah, Otumba, really for talk. your contribution. Of course, those are personal um, submissions and they have nothing to do with the TVC news. Mm -hmm. Now, what issues, apart from the, you know, politics, what issues would you say are relevant, you know, ahead of this election? You see, and that's the issue. Mm -hmm. We are leaving the issues for the, because of these unnecessary distractions. The people in Ogo State, they want food. They understand me. They need a political party with a candidate that can give them the dividends of democracy. Look, and this is not peculiar to Ogun State alone. Even those who are working in this country, there are people you can classify as working poor. Because as soon as they get their salary and pay the school fees and everything, there is nothing left. And people are going through bread and water months, bread and water, months by month. So they need a candidate who can give them the dividends of democracy, not those who will empower them with uh, Okada and what have you. And there are some who would also tell you that the, uh, um, the infrastructure development in Ogun has been phenomenal look, in the look, past uh, eight years. Uh, let, you don't agree with that? No, no, no. We need to be very objective. Mm. I'm not saying this governor, I'm also, to be fair to him, he has tried in certain respect and he has failed woefully in other respect. But when you become a governor of a state, it's an imperfect position. You can't please everybody. And one must give him credit for one or two things. But what is going on now is now overshadowing whatever is his achievement. That's and what I you know, that's what we were saying before that the main issue shouldn't be politics. It should be, you know, development you can't, in no, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't and actually, If you have just said that the governor has done well yes. and you want people to focus on the issue, isn't that the issue they should be looking at in the real sense? But let me hold your thought yeah, very please. quickly. Yakub is calling back yeah, from Dokemo. Hello, Yakub. Uh, good, good, good morning, Mr. Yes. Once again. And then good morning, Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you see, Mr. I think if uh, like four, five, or ten people are taking the call to this studio in response of this topic, I can tell you out of ten, nine or eight of them will say that uh, Governor Amosu should be expelled from the party. I don't know any other thing I want to call anti party uh, politics mm -hmm. now. Imagine someone hold on to a ticket in a party that wants to represent a party as in the Phoenix. And then you will now go and support another party that how do you going to do it? You want to campaign for the other party for the governor? And then you hold on to the ticket of the same party of yours at APC that wants to come represent them in this village. Mm -hmm. If any, if I would be on show my life, I have opportunity this money, I will take the bull by the horn. I expel them from the party, including the uh, approach of uh, Imo State. That is what we need to do because failure to do that. If I'm also careful, every other people in the subsequent election is nearest to show. They will see it as a as a something that is good. That mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm in another party, I can do whatever I like. If I'm also careful, I can come up with one that I want to support party A, and then I hold on to another party B ticket. Mm -hmm. Why is why is it happen? And then it's like they are not many. Look at the uh, 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 Ibo today. But for that reason, both Godfather and Godfather, they are fighting. I think you made your point clearly, Jacob. Thank you very much for uh, your contribution. And before you ask your next yes. question, let me address that mm -hmm. point. And why this is a necessary distraction, I'll tell you. You know the APC flag of their campaign in Emo State, some few weeks, I think last week or so. Now, when you flag off the campaign, what you are supposed to do as the party national chairman is to be campaigning against the opposition candidates and tell them why you should be the best choice. But the contrary, what is, happened, the the contrary is the case. You now have the national chairman campaigning against a member of his own political party in the person of Okurosha. And now, once the president, Buhari, or whoever comes and flag off the APC campaign, no good state, the same thing is going to happen. Why? So you can't have an enemy within. What is supposed to happen at this stage is if these people are not ready, you've reached out to, to, to them to the reconciliation committee. If they are not ready to toe the line, then you tell them to leave. It's uh, as simple as ABC. I have another caller from Ogun State, Iriwale, to be precise. Good morning, Joshua. Okay, good morning, uh, Mr. Mian. I greet your guest. Good morning. Uh, please, I think the issue is development. Development. If certain parts of Ogun State have felt uh, the development uh, strides of uh, Governor Amosu, that is very good. But I want to tell you that the border towns, 
are worse for it. Mm -hmm. We are in deep, I mean, terrible mess in terms of infrastructural development. I want to appeal to Governor Amon Sufu. I think he is, I consider him to be an intellectual person. Please, he should uh, have an understanding of give and take. Let's see what happened in Lagos. I have my respect for Governor Amboti. This is good. This is an example. He should follow that example. He's not a candidate. You made your point already, Joshua. Thank you very much for your contribution. We have to wrap this now. <laughs> uh, what really is the take-home lesson um, in all of the developments in Ogusta? There are some who would say that it is the result eventually in 2019 that justifies the move anyone is taking right now. But um, what would you say is the take-home for politicians from the, this uh, development? The take-home for politicians is this. If you are not ready to tow the party line, leave the party. It's as simple as ABC. And and leaving that aside, mm. come 2019, this is about the people. And the people, you can cause all sorts of problems here and there. You can sponsor a candidate, but at the end of the day, it is the people who will decide. And I can tell you today, I know who is going to be the next governor. You don't have to say it again. State. I think you made your, your, your point. No, no, yes, right. International lawyer <laughs> and politician for me. I know. Thank you very much for thank joining you. us on the program. So <laughs> once every four years, <laughs> the electorate has a chance to, you know, they have a power to elect who is going to represent them. Again, you have the opportunity, and I hope that you're going to make good use of it as we count down to the 2019 general election. Thanks for being a part of the show today. We'll be back tomorrow with another exciting one. I am Nifemi Ogunto. Goodbye.